The second of four major questions around long-term care would be, when I need care, who will provide it? Again, there are really only two answers. The first answer is my care will be provided by someone I love and who cares about me. This is most commonly going to be a family member, perhaps a spouse or a child. And then let's explore this just a little bit more because it's important. Many people we work with will come in and say that their kids told them not to worry because they will take care of them. Whenever we hear this, a question comes to mind. Did your children say, I'll take care of you? Or did they say, I want to provide your care? Those are two very different things. We've learned over the years that many times when a child says to a parent that they will take care of them, they may not fully understand what they are saying. Sometimes the statement really means I love you or I want what's best for you. It's an expression of love and loyalty, but this is very different than actually providing the care on a daily ongoing basis. Here's a glimpse into what providing that care actually means. First, do our children have the financial resources available? Do they have the requisite flexibility in their job or their career? Do they live close enough? Are they willing to provide ongoing care that has no defined duration? Do they have the physical strength and emotional stamina? A topic that most try to avoid involves a willingness to interact in new ways that have not customarily been a part of our prior relationship. In a compromised or even undignified situation with incontinence, bathing, dressing, and toileting, are we willing to let our family see us that way? As with most things in life, there are people who couldn't care less and others who care very much. I was part of a family meeting yesterday with my siblings and a parent around this very conversation, and my parent wanted nothing to do with us changing, bathing, or caring for them. These are some of the things that need to be addressed. We recently had a client tell us, look, I have five kids and I love all of them. I even like a couple of them. They all say that they will take care of me, and I know that they mean well. The problem is, is that only one of them has the financial ability to do so. Only one of them, different from the first, lives close enough. Still another is the only one with the career flexibility, and only one of them is well equipped emotionally. They all have families of their own, they are all unique individually, and I don't foresee any one of them being able to handle this on their own without this becoming a problem for all of them. So the first long-winded answer to the question of who will provide the care is a family member. The second possible answer to this question is our care will be provided by a skilled, trained, paid professional. And there are nuances to this as well that often go unnoticed. A professional can provide the type and the quality of care when and where we need it. That's great, that's extremely important. The advantage to a professional that is often overlooked is that this arrangement helps preserve the family dynamic, especially between spouses or between a parent and a child. Having a professional provide care means that the family members in this discussion are now on the same side of the transaction, meaning that now our family gets to supervise the care, not provide it. When someone requires care, everything about their world changes. Most importantly, they've lost independence, and this can be extremely difficult for them emotionally. By having the family on the same side of the transaction, it means that now our family has the ability to take care of us without actually providing our care. They can support us, they can love us, they can do things around the house, run errands, the sorts of things that help them feel like they are doing their part to take care of us, but without having to interact with us in uncomfortable ways. I mentioned going through this right now because my family has been through this three other times as well in my lifetime, which begs the question, when is the ideal time to start planning? Well, any time is the right time, and it's certainly never too late, but financially speaking, the early to mid-50s is the sweet spot, and as we move through these last two important questions, it'll become clear as to why. Now the third major question is how much does long-term care cost? And we cover that in a video in and of itself. So we will see you over there.